Halima Croft is Managing Director and Global Head of Commodity Strategy at RBC Capital Markets. Great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me on. So we are watching oil prices fall, which is kind of a head scratcher because we're seeing these heightened tensions between Ukraine and Russia, uh, the predictions from Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley that crude could hit $100 per barrel this year. And never mind the fact that, you know, Russia is an important member of OPEC plus. What is going on today? Well, I mean, I think the dollar and concerns about Fed rate hikes is what's dominating, you know, all markets today. Um, that said, if we're heading into a very important OPEC meeting, I think concerns about Russia-Ukraine remain front and center. And certainly the path to $100 oil is a Russian invasion of Ukraine. And so I think, again, the market is taking a breather, focusing on the Fed. But if those tanks cross the border, make no mistake, we are in for significantly higher oil prices. You know, despite oil prices lower today, they are up about 10 percent this year, seeing gold prices up as well. Uh, so with, with commodity prices rising, is that an indication that, in fact, if that happens, what you said, that, you know, an invasion does happen and the U.S., uh, you know, sends troops, it, is it an indication that the U.S. could be willing to go further than first thought to defend Ukraine? I mean, I don't think, I think the United States is deeply concerned about higher energy prices. And so when they think about their you know, sanctions that they're looking to impose, I think they're talking about crippling financial sanctions, but are concerned about ensuring that Europe can still get the gas that it needs. But there is an expectation, obviously, if Russia's kicked out of SWIFT, if there are sanctions placed on their ability to raise debt through ruble transactions, that Russia can do what it has done in the past, which is restrict the flow of gas into Europe. So that remains a very, very serious concern of the White House. They are working with countries like Qatar, like Norway, like Asian consuming countries that may have additional cargoes available because it's a milder winter. They're looking to try to get as much additional gas into Europe to mitigate a potential Russian cutoff, but knowing that they cannot fully backstop a Russian supply disruption. You know, there is the possibility of economic sanctions, of course, and we've seen the U.S. do this before in the past, impose sanctions uh, when Russia annexed Crimea. Sanctions have been imposed for election interference and for cyber attacks. Why do you think or do you think that sanctions would actually work here when they have not worked in the past? I mean, I think the real question is, what is the resolve of the West to endure some economic pain in pursuit of their objectives around trying to change Vladimir Putin's calculation. I do think if you signal that you are trying to carve out energy, you are potentially signaling to Vladimir Putin that you are highly concerned about rising energy prices. Hence, he may respond by cutting off energy flows to try to force the issue with the West. I think it's going to be very important to see what happens to Russian financial institutions. Leading sanctions experts say, one clear way to really hurt Putin is to go after the major Russian financial institutions, Burbank, BTP, Gazprom Bank. But a number of Western asset managers hold Russian financial. So the question is, do Western countries really want to take on such sanction measures because it can cause some pain for Western populations? So I think it's going to be very interesting to watch how they balance their willingness to confront Vladimir Putin while at the same time trying to shield their own countries from any economic fallout. And I'm curious what you think about uh, divisions among Western allies like Germany um, and how the response is toward Russia. Does that hurt the effort to deter Putin in getting him to pull back? I mean, all Western nations have tried to strike a unified front in saying they will be crippling sanctions. But we still started to see some cracks emerge over the weekend. Certainly the U.S. and the U.K., have taken a stronger public line on Russia. You had the German naval chief expressing some sympathy for Vladimir Putin, lost his job for doing so. But you even had Chancellor Schultz out over the weekend talking about the need to be prudent when it comes to sanctions. So there does seem, at least publicly, to be a less willingness on the part of the Germans to impose the most crippling economic sanctions. But what we have been told is that the German government has indicated that, for example, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, that will be put on ice if those, German, if those Russian troops cross the border into Ukraine. Okay, Halima Croft with RBC Capital Markets. Fantastic getting your perspective today. Thank you so much.